In this video, I'm going to share the findings of two different research studies that try to answer the question, what's the secret to a long marriage? Both of the studies I'm going to talk about are qualitative, meaning they directly asked couples who had been together for over 38 years, then coded their answers to see what their most common answers were. One of the studies was from 2001 and another one was from 2023. So I was also curious whether the secret to a long and happy marriage has changed along with the times. Just as a reminder, since these are qualitative studies, don't take the findings to mean that they apply to the general population. Point of qualitative research is often not external validity, but rather the beautiful thing about qualitative research is that it lets us hear people's lived experience in their own words. And that can be interesting and valuable even if it doesn't apply to every single person in the general population. You can think of it kind of like a documentary, except one that's created by scientists who go to extra lengths to make sure that they're getting at the truth of what the participants are saying, rather than trying to spin a specific angle. But really I want this to be more just a discussion with you guys. I want to know what you think about the findings of these studies, whether they ring true for your own relationship or people you know who've had really long-lasting relationships, and whether you think things have drastically changed since 2001. Without further ado, let's talk about the secret to a long marriage. So first let's talk about the study from 2001, which wanted to know what makes marriages last. The researcher said so much of previous research had been done mainly on young couples or couples that ended up breaking up, but what about the couples that last? So there are two research questions where number one, how do couples explain their own long-term marriage? And number two, do husbands and wives perceive different factors as contributing to the longevity of their marriage? To tell you a little bit about the participants, including some of the limitations of the study, they interviewed 30 participants, all of whom had been together for 38 to 54 years. They were a non-random sample from central Maine. All of them were white, all of them were straight, all of them had at least one child, and only one of the couples had divorced parents, which really speaks to how different the times were. I mean, if you think about it, 2001, these were couples that had been together for like 40 years. That means they themselves got married in 1960. So obviously divorce wasn't common in their parents' generation. So how did the couples explain the longevity of their marriage? The most common answers were friendship, love, similar backgrounds and interests, commitment, and freedom to pursue goals. All 30 of them said that having children strengthened the relationship, though 16 of them also mentioned some type of initial stress or adjustment period. Which is interesting because I know from more recent research that having kids really puts a strain on marriage, but maybe for those that last long term, children act kind of like a glue. Many of the participants did say that they felt having kids binded them to that person, and also that it was a lesson in selflessness, which you kind of need to have in order to be in a healthy long-term relationship. Ship. While we're on the topic of children and how they throw a curveball into your schedule, I want to tell you about something that can really help with productivity when your schedule is insane, like mine is these days now that I'm a mom. And that's where I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video, AccuFlow. AccuFlow is a tool that helps you maximize productivity and efficiency while minimizing procrastination. It's a one-stop shop for time blocking and linking all of the integrations you use for work, leisure, and so forth. Let me just show you how my schedule looks nowadays, and spoiler alert, it looks very different from how it used to. So the first thing you will notice is that there is a lot less on my schedule. I also now have a baby night shift from 3 a.m. to 9 a.m. every night. Um, so in order to duplicate this for the following night, I'm just going to double click it, click duplicate, and then drag it over for tomorrow as well. Today, I'm actually ahead of schedule with recording sponsorships, so thank goodness for that. Was not expecting that whatsoever. This afternoon, I'm also going to be taking another shift from my husband with the baby so that he can get some work done, so I'll just add that in here. And then you can add a tag or a project. So I will add baby in there. As you can see, you can color code things. So I typically color code um, self-care related stuff green in my schedule. Um, you will notice I no longer have my meals in there just because I don't know exactly when I'm going to have time to have my meals. These are just some tasks that I would like to get to today. So maybe I will try to drag them in here. 
And then taking baby for a stroll outside could go under going for a walk tomorrow. The cool thing about AccuFlow is that you can have all your integrations in one spot. So if you just go to integrations, these are all the different apps that you can link, which is really helpful because then all of your appointments show up in your calendar and you get reminders for them. I've been reminded in the past that I had an appointment that I would have otherwise completely forgotten about. You can also prioritize certain things to keep the most important at the forefront of your day. I would say recording these sponsorships is my top priority today, so I'm going to make that my goal for the day. There's also a new focus timer where you can time yourself if you have a tight deadline for something. There's a new AI feature which automatically assigns your tasks to certain projects. For example, all of these, I didn't have to input myself. The AI generator kind of knew which one was self-care, which one was content, which, which one was baby related. Plus Aki, their new AI assistant is currently being rolled out. There's also a statistics feature where you can see how you're using your time, which allows you to be more efficient, and a rituals button, which allows you to see what you did yesterday and prepare for tomorrow. They have one-on-one -on -one productivity coaching available, and there's also an onboarding call when you sign up. So if you're like me and you're looking for a tool to just help you stay afloat while you're drowning in your schedule, use my link below and check out AkiFlow. Now back to the findings of that study that we were talking about. Some of the participants said their religious values positively impacted their marriage, others not. 80% of them said that their parents' marriage had an impact on their own, and 20% of them said that their long-lasting marriage was a reaction to their parents' not-so-happy marriage. So if you didn't have a very happy or healthy relationship model to you, it's not a death sentence to your own marriage. If you make it your mission to not be like your parents, it can be done. What about the gender differences between what men and women said? Women tended to attribute the longevity of their marriage to freedom to pursue their dreams and individuality, similar backgrounds and interests, friendship, and love while men attributed it to friendship, love, similar backgrounds, and similar values. So overall, they had pretty similar top lists. But isn't it so interesting that women's number one reason was their freedom to pursue their dreams and individuality? I wonder if this was maybe more of a concern in 2001? Because remember, these couples had been together since like 1960. So back then, this might have been considered a bit of a rarity in marriages. So maybe part of what helped these couples last so long was that despite the times, husbands allowed the wives to be their own people. This also rings true to what I've heard from my own grandma when she talks about her marriage with her husband, which lasted, I think it was like 63 years in the end. One of the things she always mentions is he never forced me to do anything. He never told me I couldn't do something that I wanted to do, which is so interesting because I, for instance, would never think to mention that as a reason for my happy marriage even though it's kind of just like a given, right? Now let's contrast these findings to a study from 2023. This one had some advantages over the one I just mentioned. It was a global study. It was not just sampling people from central Maine and had a larger sample size. First, researchers asked a sample of 137 couples who had been together for only three to 15 years what they would ask couples who had been together long term, like 40 plus years. Then they asked that sample of 180 couples who had been together long term, those questions. And the most common question was, what is the secret to relationship longevity? The top 10 secrets that they mentioned were commitment, altruism, shared values, good communication, compromise, like having a good give and take, love and never giving up. So all in all, in my opinion, quite similar to the answers given 22 years earlier. And interestingly, no one said freedom to pursue dreams and individuality here. That one seemed more specific to the sample from 2001. Is it possible that changing gender roles means this is now more of a baseline expectation in relationships, not something to attribute relationship longevity to? Let me know what you think in the comments. Anyway, so my takeaways from this research was the people who can make marriage last for a very long time are committed to each other. They take marriage seriously. They don't take it lightly. They don't want to give up on it. They love their partners. They're friends with their partners. They respect their partners. They have things in common with each other. They have interests, hobbies, values that are shared among them. They communicate well. They're kind to each other. Even when they disagree, they do so respectfully. They compromise. They're altruistic. They do kind things for the other person. It's also interesting to me how similar the secret to relationship longevity is to Sternberg's triangular model of love, which I go into in greater depth in the connection course. That's my four plus hour 
our relationship skills course, which you can always find linked in the description box, by the way. So yeah, let me know what your thoughts are on these two studies. Did any of these findings surprise you? Do you have any theories about why people said what they did? Did you relate to the findings at all? Is there anything you learned from this that you'll be taking moving forward? Jot it down in the comments. Hope you have a lovely rest of your week and I'll see you soon.